bless you, uh, people of God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, the honor, and the praise. It all belongs to him. If you can turn your Bible to Psalms 1, hallelujah. Psalms 1, Psalms 1, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, glory. Ah, Shepoka. Rabba. AKB Shepoka. Hallelujah. Psalms 1. I need to get over there, right? I'm telling y'all to be there and I hate that. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 1, Psalms 1, Psalms 1. Hallelujah, Psalms 1. We're going to read the whole thing here. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read it. reads such as, you can stand, stand, please. You can stand. Amen. Glory. The Psalms read, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Something's going to happen, y'all. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. But look what it says. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the, the, shaft with, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In verse 6 reads, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish hallelujah before i begin let's look to the lord in a word of prayer father we thank you hallelujah for your great mercy and your love we thank you for your anointing in this place today god i agree with you god i agree with the holy spirit move minister mac out of the way god in the name of you that you're perfect Every word spoken, God, that your perfect will will go forth, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because, God, you know what we all stand in need of. So we give you permission. Hallelujah. We give the Holy Ghost center stage, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you now. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. Well, God bless you. Again, to God be the glory. I've looked this over, up and down, in and out, sideways. Well, praise you, the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. And what did I surmise or come to? Hallelujah. It basically falls down. In the end, we all going to have to stand before God. Hallelujah. But see, God is a good God. Hallelujah. He wouldn't demand something of you and I without providing a way. So I really can't um, accuse him of being unjust. Hallelujah. Now, he's put a demand on me. Hallelujah. Demand, mandate, whatever. If you're born again a Christian, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. But he's not only has he done that, he's made provisions of how to get there. So in assessing the Psalms, I see my destination is really In whose hands? It's what I choose to do. 
Hallelujah. Glory. See, this psalm is talking about what the godly do and what the ungodly do. Amen. And also in it is an attitude. Because, see, I have to, it starts out, I have to have the right attitude to even to succumb to the rest of the psalms. The right attitude, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm going to try to break it down verse by verse as the Holy Ghost um, leads me. Hallelujah. Because hallelujah, because we want, we want application too, right? We want to know how to apply this thing, right? He's made the provision, but we got to know how to apply. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so um, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hallelujah. So that's one thing a blessed man does not do. He does not walk in the counsel of the world. He doesn't get advice from the world. He doesn't get advice from Twitter. He doesn't get advice from Facebook. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He doesn't get his counsel from the world. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. And I think about, I, I thought about Enoch. It said, when I saw the word walk, I thought of Enoch walked with God and he was not, right? Because God took him. Hallelujah. So that, that's what we to do. Hallelujah. We got to walk as a world. Well, I ought to be different. I want to be different. Hallelujah. Like I said before, I don't want to go back there. Hallelujah. Y'all going to help me plow through this morning. Hallelujah. Because I remember. Glory to God. I remember. Man, I was walking back through that thing. And I remember. See, um, uh, I mentioned a few weeks ago, you know, I, um, and I'm excited about that thing. Yo, I turned 60, man. And, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 man, I'm over the top about that thing, man. I'm, oh, I'm like, oh, God, look what you did. And, and, but, but, but here's the thing. And I was walking back through it, right? And I said, man, I don't want to go back there to that council of the world. They, they, they're wicked. You know, they have no love. They have no compassion. And I was thinking, see, God saved me 30 years ago when I was 30. Well, July 17th of this year will be 30 years ago. And I was 30 years old. And I was looking at my life prior to that. Oh, y'all rotten. I'm glad you, you were smelling good, but I was rotten. To the core. Boy, them generational things was working on me, brother. As much as I was fighting them, they were working on me. And I said, I don't want to go back there. I don't want counsel. From where I want to walk with God. I don't want God to twist my arm to try to get me to do this thing. I want to do it of my own free will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because if he has to twist my arm, there's going to be some issues. And I'm going to be stagnated. Now, you don't believe it. Look at the children of Israel. Forty years. Why? Worldly counsel. Ungodly counsel. They wanted to be like the people around them. Hallelujah. That's why I'm so excited, Lord. Boy, I'm saved, boy. Woo! Boy, I don't know what you Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Y'all remember? Anybody remember before? Hallelujah. I don't want the counsel 
of the world. I want to walk with God. Enoch walked with God and he was not. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, the blessed man doesn't want the counsel of the ungodly or the wicked. He goes on to say, nor does he stand in the way of sinners, the path of sinners. Some ought to be new. I ought to hesitate at least if I'm going to cut some folks out. I ought to think twice, ain't it? Huh? They shouldn't just flow. Huh? That's what sinners do. That's the way they do. That's the path they take. Hallelujah. I don't want to stand in the way of sinners. I don't come up out of that, y'all. I'm a new creature. creature. My conversation is different. My response to you when you act up is different. I'm talking about me now. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. Even if I don't act right, give the poor boy a chance. I'm going to go to God and I'm going to come back and get it right. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I believe, I believe this, y'all. I believe this word. I believe it with every fiber of our being. I believe it with, I believe God. I believe God. I believe that I'm able to do it because he says I'm able to do it. See the heart, man. I can change your mind. That might not do a whole lot. It might sustain you for a while, but if I can change the heart, if God can change the heart, boy, you got something then. That's why you need to pray for them politicians up there. Y'all talking about what they ain't doing? Are you praying? <laughs> if your spouse acting up and all the children, are you praying? Hallelujah. Glory. See, people want something different. This is our time, y'all. This is our time. This is the time for you and I not to act like sinners or stand in the way they sinners. It's time for you and I to try to draw them in. Time is winding up. You ain't got a lot of time. Hallelujah. And why would you ask? Somebody preached a message one time said, what in hell do you want? I said, good God Almighty. I'm going to lock that one down. Because <laughs> there ain't a thing I want down there, brother. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Been used and abused all your life only to discover that that old scoundrel, that old no good for nothing, slew foot, going to torment you some more. And you spent the whole lifetime acting ugly. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe, maybe I don't. Maybe the Holy Ghost got the wrong church this morning. Wrong folk, God. Wrong folk, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, y'all. Trying to calm it down. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. The mockers. Are you with that God stuff? Yeah! I'm with that God stuff. I'm all in. I'm a holy roller, whatever you want to call it. I'm all of that in some more. And I'm glad about it. If you know what I know, <laughs> you better try to get over here too, brothers. Hallelujah. 
Because this stuff is eternal, y'all. I'm not playing with this. Some folk like the. Now I'm looking this way, so they can't say I was really talking to them. Some folk playing church, y'all. They just playing with God. It's just like the scornful. Hallelujah. They taking a seat. So that tell, you plan on staying a while. You don't got comfortable. You took a seat with the markers. Hallelujah. I'm gonna take my time today, y'all. The fried chicken got the weight. And the mashed potatoes and the macaroni, sweet potatoes and yams and the iced tea. It's got to wait today, y'all. It'll be there when you get there, but I need your mind here right now. <laughs> so get your mind off of that. We're going to eat today. Don't worry about that. <coughs> Glory to God. The enemy tried Monday and Tuesday. I couldn't even talk. Couldn't talk. I said, man, well, well, so, so, so I said, well, God, you might have to call somebody else. No, I said, I ain't calling nobody else. It's just Monday or Tuesday. You ain't got to be there to Sunday. We just <laughs> That's a long couple days from here now, son. You got time. I'm going to get you right. <laughs> Where we go sometimes, his ways, but not our ways. Will you get up and shake yourself from the scoffers? Would you do that? It ain't about me, y'all. I ain't got no help for you. Can't even help myself. Only the Holy Ghost. Only the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And if this thing is going to work for me, hallelujah. If I'm not going to have the counsel on the ungodly, if I'm not going to stand in the way of sinners, if I'm not going to take a seat with the, um, the scoffers, then I need to yield to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I need to yield. I need to come in agreement with him. I need to humble myself. I need to bow down. Before the Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we see those three things that are blessed, man. He doesn't do that. But here what he does do. Let me see here now. Uh oh. But, see, when you yield to the Holy Ghost, you get a but. That changes everything. That changes everything now. Because you decide to yield now. Now the tide getting ready to shift now. Amen. So let's see what he says here. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. You ain't got to meditate but two times. That's day and night. That covers it all. Hallelujah. I'm excited. See, I know. Hallelujah. See, in my diet, I don't eat all kind of crazy stuff. I'm talking about my physical diet. Hallelujah. Because I know hypertension running my family. Hallelujah. I don't eat a lot of junk food and all that crazy stuff. I don't even eat a lot of meat, y'all. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, you know I, I, I reverence this thing that God has given me. You know, I don't eat all kind of 
crazy stuff that I'm not going to run my blood pressure up and all kinds of stuff. So, so, so what are you saying, brother preacher? I'm saying from a spiritual standpoint, what's in your diet? Hallelujah. Do you delight yourself in the law of the Lord? Do you? Hallelujah. Psalms 119 has got 176 verses. And throughout every scripture, just pick, I'm just going to go over to 119. Psalms 119. Turn over to Psalms 119. Let me show you something. Psalms 119. I ain't got a I'm just going to pick one rambling because he's talking about God's statute, laws, testimony, ordinance, his word. I'm just going to pick one. 24, um, 119 and verse 24. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counsel. Focus on testimony. Testimony, testimony audience, God commands. Every one of them got testimony, ordinance, command, or something, or the word in it. Look at verse 20. My soul breaketh for the longing that it hath until thy judgment at all times. A longing, y'all. God's judgments. Talking about God's judgment. He's, he, he's, he's acknowledging God just throughout the whole thing, every one of them. Hallelujah. Look at verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy what? Look at 77. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live for thy law. is my delight. Verse 40, behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Every one of them, every one of them. 59, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy what? Testimony. Think on him day and night. If I were to ask you, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It ought to be God. If you were to write a list of priority, the number one thing should be God. Y'all, I desire him. I hunger after him. I thirst after him. I seek his face. I cry out to him. Because I know I will never forget before I got saved at 30 years old. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the things that I was doing even though I was trying because of the generational oppressions and strongholds and curses. Y'all might get tired of me saying granddaddy had two families, daddy had two families, and guess where the brother Deacon was gone. No, I don't have two families now. That's, that's, <laughs> but, but I'm just telling you how that stuff perpetuates. Hallelujah. And you, with all your strength, you're trying to fight it, and guess what? It just happened. Because them strongholds are on your mind, your thoughts, everywhere you go. See, I don't want to be selfish. Because, see, I understand. Hallelujah. Glory. The things that I do in the way that I live will not only affect me, but it will affect my sons 
and my daughter and their kids and that thing just perpetuate over and over again. So I'm not going to be selfish like that. God brought me up out of that mess and delivered me and cleaned me up 30 years ago. And every time I visit home, they remind me of that old scoundrel I used to be. I just smile. <laughs> when I say, but here's the thing. God special, specializes in scoundrels like me, like I was. Boy, he'll sweep you up and clean you up. Boy, I tell you, boy, hallelujah, glory to God. Boy, boy, he'll put a smile. I got a big old smile too, y'all. Yeah, boy, he got a, he'll put a smile on your face. Boy, he'll put a skip in your step. Boy, I tell you, boy, he'll make you, boy, he'll make you a brand new boy. He will deliver you from you. Hallelujah. My mind changed my heart to change my mind. The way I think. Hallelujah. Because the psalmist said he delights. See, I'm not looking at your fault. Because I already know you got faults. Because see, I love, because I love God. And God loves you. I don't have a choice. I got to love you. And I'm going to look for the best in you. And I'm going to try to pull it out. I'm not going to drag you in. Oh, that old sister, think, think, think what? Isn't that the stuff you used to do in the world? Hmm? Isn't that the stuff you used to do in the world? Judge people and criticize them and say all this. They think they this and that. No, man, that don't happen up in the church. That shouldn't happen. You're a new creature now. I should be pulling my brother and sister Along, I should be trying to help them. I should be trying to find the best in them. And what's going to help me? What's going to help that righteous man? What's going to help that blessed man? He got to get in that law. Because Paul said when he would to do good, what? Evil is present. Paul said, I find another law fighting in my members here. By default, we act dog. We act crazy by default. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Bro, Mac P, I pray a lot now. I told you that, but um, um, there can be a time or two now that my um, your family might catch you, anybody might catch you. <laughs> That's why I say if I come off the wrong way, I got to go back and get it right, man. I can't. That, that ain't me, man. I can't. I exercise that thing, man. That's how you get muscles, right? You put it to use for you. Put it to work. You exercise. Yes. You exercise. You go back to that law. And you look in the law and see what God said. You already know what you want to do. You know what the flesh telling you to do. You know what the devil telling you to do. But you go back to the law. You say, I need to look at this thing again. What the law said at midnight, 1962, I will arise to give thanks Unto thee, because of thy righteous judgment. See, he ain't talking crazy in there. <laughs> he ain't talking crazy with you. Now, I ain't got nothing against Facebook. I'm sure some of it is used for the proper stuff. But what? Now, I don't have a Facebook account, but boy, they tell me y'all be cutting up on there. Now, y'all know folk talk. I'm telling you what they tell me. I didn't go looking for it. Wrong church. Wrong people, God. Okay, I'm going to get back up here. God loves us. And when you love somebody, 
Hallelujah. When you love somebody, if the train is coming down the track and they're standing in the middle of the track and you love them now, you're going to help them get off that track, right? That's the way God is. See, see, that's what God is doing. See, 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 see some of the train is coming. Woo, woo. You know, hit the locomotive. He hitting it, boy. And you standing right there looking. And God is saying, why don't you get off the track? Get off the track before it's too late. Get into my word. When I came here early on as a young Christian, one of the challenges our apostle gave us, he said, read the word. Read the word. Didn't understand nothing. But boy, I've been reading and looking and Boy, after a while, I go, oh my God, okay. Woo! Shake yourself, Samson. Yes. <laughs> boy, God will do it, boy. Boy, he'll change your mind. Boy, he'll change the way you your, your look, your appearance. Boy, God will do that thing. Hallelujah. He get all of that twisted thinking out of there. Why? Because I'm looking in the Lord now. Let the proud be ashamed. Verse 78, 119. For they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But look what I'm going to do. That's going to shift the course of everything. But I will meditate in thy precepts. Meditate means to mutter. I say it. So if you see me, I'll be everywhere talking to myself. <laughs> you ever talk to yourself? Now, self, you know you don't need to be acting like that. <laughs> yeah, I talk to myself. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. You know you were wrong. Mm -hmm. You know it. Now, why are you acting like that? This morning, on my way here, now, now. <laughs> Now, um, so the guy this morning, he pulls. Now, I know I, I'm coming towards him, but I, I see that he doesn't see me. I see he's looking that way. He's turning right when I'm coming from this angle here to his left. And then he turns around and sees me, and I'm up on him, and he's going to get mad with me. <laughs> now, see, that was one of the moments. I'm glad I remember I had to preach today. You, 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 you. But, but, but I, I, my point is this, y'all. <laughs> and, you know, and I passed by him, and, uh, you know, I kind of smiled. I got a little, you know, a few feet. I don't, I don't act, don't be looking in the mirror, and <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, within that couple of feet, I'm saying to myself, now, you know, he, he was the one. He calls us, but then I remember his precepts, man. I remember, boy, you can't be acting like that. You can't be looking all in the mirror and, and bawling your mouth, <laughs> looking at the man crazy, and yes, he was wrong. But you're going to preach your message today about the testimonies, the statutes, the ordinance, the precepts. <laughs> now, I got to make sure you know how to exercise this thing. Before you get up there and preach this now. Because I, I don't want you throwing, selling no wolf tickets now. You see what I'm saying? And you, you the first part taker. You ain't got your stuff together. And you up here trying to. T Wrong church. Wrong church, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Statues. Oh, you, you, you delight in that. You, you, your feet run to it. Yeah. I'm looking in this thing here. I'm looking. God, what you say? And they acting ugly. What, what, what you say, God? What should I do for my enemies, God? You say I should pray for them. I should, should feed them. I should love them. I got to do all that stuff. I can't hold nothing against them. And here's the beauty. It's possible if I'm willing. If I'm willing to yield, it's possible. But if I'm not willing to do it, guess what? Hallelujah. I'm going to delight myself in somebody's law. 
but it's not going to be his. And I only got two options. Either it's God's law, the world's law, the devil's law. I got, I got a choice. Hallelujah. Delight yourself in the Lord. Do you have any compassion? Do you have tolerance? Do you have patience with people? See, I'm seeing this thing now. The last couple of times I spoke, well, one of my friends, the last time he heard me spoke, it was always in Psalms, right? So he says to me, you love Psalms? I said, brother, I go where the Holy Ghost go. Doesn't matter what I love. I love Proverbs. Proverbs is full of wisdom. Boy, Solomon, a bad dude. Well, I learned a lot from him. He had 800 wives, 300 couples. Boy, that man got a lot to say. Boy, I got I to gotta listen. He got a lot to say. I'll listen to a fella like that. He's got something to say. But I told him, no, I don't love Psalms. If I had to pick a book, it'd be Proverbs. But I go with the Holy Ghost. I give him lead way. I yield to him. Because I have no idea. The heart is desperately wicked, y'all. It's deceitful. And we don't know what's in this thing. Unless somebody push the wrong button, it'll surprise you. You'll be like, what? <laughs> I delight. I meditate. Go back over to Psalms 1. See, Psalms 1 is one of the Psalms that's outside. Psalms 1 and 2 are outside of the rest of the Psalms. It's like a prelude of getting your heart right, getting the attitude right to be able to walk in the rest of it. I couldn't find out who the author was. Hallelujah. We know that David wrote a lot of them, at least 73 of them. Asa, but you know, there's a couple other. Hallelujah. Glory. Now look what verse 3 said, because I meditate. Now, 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 now the ties have shifted, the winds have shifted now. Hallelujah. I'm meditating on that word now. Hallelujah. I'm not doing my own thing. I don't have my own thoughts. I'm looking into the perfect li law of liberty. Hallelujah. I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm saying, that's me. That's me. Now the ties begin to shift. Now let's see what happened in verse 3. And he shall be like a tree... Planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in its season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He shall be like a tree. Boy, when I think of a tree planted by the river, see, a tree got roots. That's right. Hallelujah. So when it's by the streams of river, it's just continually getting fed, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That, that tree, hallelujah, that planted by that river, hallelujah. Because see, here's, here's what's important. Don't miss this. Here's what's important. See, what's in the roots is going to manifest the fruit that I get. So that, that's why you, you, you always hear pastor say, I, I, he want to get the root today. You know, he want to get that thing that's way buried down in there. Hallelujah. Because he got, once he get the root right, we got the right stuff flowing now. And see, the fruit is going to be pretty. See, you just don't go in the grocery store and grab some fruit now. Man, you looking at that thing, and I was looking at a wall, and boy, they had a box full of them, and I was pressing on them, and I said, that one's too soft. A lot of them were soft. I said, I need it hard. Hallelujah. Now, why didn't I just go in there and just grab a watermelon? No, I got to check this thing out, man. I got to check it out. If you want a husband, you better check that thing out. Because a lot of them know how to do Christian knees. They know how to talk the talk. They know how to walk the walk. They know how to say all the right thing. Hallelujah. See, even the demons believe and tremble. 
You better examine that fruit. If you want a husband or a wife, you better examine that fruit. I ain't going to say that, but I ain't going to say what I thought, but, um, but examine the fruit. How many wish y'all, how many of y'all, how many of you all wish you had examined the fruit before you, I ain't thinking on nobody now, but I'm just saying now, you got to look at that fruit. You can't get anxious because your stomach hungry and just put anything in there. You can't compromise. So I'll deal with that later. I don't even know how I got over here about those wives and all this other stuff. <laughs> and husband and stuff. I don't know how I got over there, but since I'm here, you better look that thing over good. You better wash it down. <laughs> Scrub it. <laughs> so you can see the defects. <laughs> I see the dirt cover a lot of stuff. Can't see the fruit good, y'all. Can't see it good. Hallelujah. There's some roots in there. Some other stuff flowing through there. And it ain't good either. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can look at a tree, right? Hallelujah. You can see whether it's producing good fruit or not, right? Hallelujah. But if it's good for nothing, what you do, you, Jesus, you hew it down. You chop it down and get rid of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it says, his leaf shall not wither. I mean, them things will be green all year round, boy. Looking full, boy. Standing tall. You'll be like that tree. When they're wrong, you, you'll bend. <laughs> you'll come right back. Why? Because the roots are being continually fed. The roots are being continually fed, so to speak, on the word of God. You and I are trees. We are continually being fed. Boy, I'm eating some good stuff, boy. I'm eating some good stuff. I'm eating the word of God. Because I understand spiritually, if I don't eat, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to shrivel up. I'm going to dry up if I'm not getting the right nutrients. Hallelujah. I'm going to act just as carnal. Because I ain't got no law in me. I ain't got no substance in me. I don't have the right stuff flowing through the roots. So my, 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 my fruit kind of look kind of bad, kind of shaky. Hallelujah. The fruit might even develop before it's time because I don't have the right stuff coming through. But when I got the right stuff coming through the right season, hallelujah, glory. And it says, and whatsoever he doeth or she doeth shall prosper because he's got the right stuff. He's meditating on the law. He's not standing in the council of the wicked. Hallelujah. He's not seated with the scornful. He's not um, standing with sinners. He's got the right stuff. He's meditating now. Day and night. Oh, he's always thinking about God. Hallelujah. And God's law. Hallelujah. He's got the right stuff flowing now. And when the right stuff starts to flowing, I'm going to get the right fruit. But look what verse 4 says. We're we, we about to shift the ties back now. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, the ungodly or the wicked are not so, but are like the shaft, or the shaft which the wind driveth away. Now I was looking at that. And what is he talking about, the shaft? See, when they used to harvest the wheat, I was looking. It's got like three parts to it. And when they would harvest it, they'd throw it up in the air, right? 
then the good stuff, the heavy stuff, would fall to the ground in the right place, right? And then you got some, some, some um, stuff that's second. That was, a, you know, it had a little weight to it. It would fall in another spot. But, but what he's talking about, the, 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 the stuff here, the, the wind would take it and just blow it away. The harvester had no use for it. No use for it. It's useless. It's dead. It has no life. That's what the ungodly is like. And I want advice from them. Huh? I'm not going back, y'all. I'm not going back to... <laughs> I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going back. And that's what the ungodly do. There's no life in them. They have no advice. See, I'm a man of wisdom. I look for wisdom. Anybody can teach me something. That's the way I look at it. I'm not too old. I'm not above anybody to learn anything. I look for that, man. I'm 60, but I look at an 80-year-old man. I want to hear what he got to say. I'm talking about a godly 80-year-old man. I want to hear what he got to say. Because, see, I'm not 80 yet. I'm 60, but I'm not 80. 65, I want to hear what you got to say. I want to see if you got any wisdom. I had a, a gentleman one time, he was, I think he was about 89. And he was talking. But see, what's in your heart? So he was talking about God now. He was talking about God, boy. He was quoting some scriptures and everything. And, and you know, and I was kind of like, wow. You know, I want to hear what he got to say. But see, I don't remember if it was the same time. This was at a car dealership. He worked at a car dealership. I don't remember if I was there at that time or the next time. The next time I saw him and I heard him talk, I said, oh, my God. Now, you 89, um, you closer than, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> at 89, you, you and um, I said, oh, my God, the way he was talking. On the women dressed, and I said, like, oh, God. I said, good God, I'm Huh? You 89, you got a foot and a half in the grave and you talking like that? But see, God will show you people. And I said, oh my God. Mm -mm. Sir, you can't be talking You can't be talking. I came up out of that. I'm not going back to that. I'm not going back to that. The ungodly. No use. Unfit. And remember I told you, both were standing in judgment, the ungodly and the godly. Oh, you can't escape the accountability. And I remind you that this is not a rehearsal. You don't get to do this over. You don't get to do this over. This is not, pra this is not a practice run. You don't get to do it again. So why not? So why not? Do I want to stand with the sinners? Do I want to sit in the seat of the scornful? Do I even want to walk in ungodly counsel, wicked counsel? There's no life in it. We were born out of that. We were, we were, we were born again. We are the light of the world. It ought to be something different about. I don't care how much how my wife act up. Boy, I'm a lover. I'm a lover of shoes off. Godly man taught me that. Brother Ed Apostle Herring, Reverend Zen White, they, they taught me, oh, what, man? I ain't, boy, I ain't come here to be looking at just occupying some space. 
That's not what I'm here for. I need some help. I need some examples before me. Brother Zen White told me, don't you ever sleep on the couch. I don't care how mad you are or how she acted. Don't you ever sleep on the couch. Boy, I rub her feet. Oh, I ain't got to go on that. Okay, I'm sorry. I ain't good. A little bit too much information. Okay, all right. All right. All right, I'm going to back up off of that one. Okay. Okay. But, but, but here's what I'm trying to drive home. See, I'm willing to deny myself. See, I had to learn that. No, she don't act right all the time. But see, I know better. I'm the head. I'm the priest. I'm the king of the cow. I am. God holds me accountable. God is a God of order. And when it's out of order, you got confusion. And all kind of crazy stuff. Y'all see the families nowadays, ungodly. Huh? Ungodly. Out of order. The day God says, Adam marry Adam, I'll accept it. But if he don't say it, it's going to be Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. I'm not moving from this. I'm not moving. Mm -mm. Certain things I'm not bulging on. Mm -mm. I don't think he's going to change his mind. Somebody know something different? The ungodly. That's what they do. They persuade. And they don't even know who's driving them. Hallelujah. Prince of Persia, those spirits influence that spirit of Babylon, influence them, that spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. See, that's what's influencing them. Why? Because they ain't got no law in them. See? You see what I'm saying? And if you and I don't get in this word, guess what's going to be influencing us? Those same spirits. Them same spirits. Or oh, they ain't operating. See, the tricks don't change. They ain't do the same thing. He do the same old tricks over and over and over again. Why? Now, why would he do that? Because you know that it works. Why change it if it works? But see, God is so good. He's provided a way of escape for you and I. My personal relationship with Jesus Christ should be so serious. I, I mean... That should be the most important thing, a personal relationship with God. I might not like what he say every time, but I should be seeking him. I should be going after him. Personal relationship first, y'all. Fellowship with God. That's what we need to have. And I cherish that. I'm not going back to the relationships I had before. I had a relationship with the devil and didn't even know it. All right, the ungodly are not so, but they have no use. They're, they're driven away. Let's see if I had something else. Um, verse 5. Let me see something here. I'll go on to verse, verse 5. Let's go on to verse 5. Therefore, somebody say when you see therefore, it's there for a reason. <laughs> therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, you mean to tell me the ungodly going to have the audacity to try to stand. <laughs> Separate the wheat from the tears. That's what Jesus said. The harvester says, should we do it now? Jesus said, no, wait. 
wait. And we're going to separate the wheat from the tears. So the day is coming. You can't hide trying to blend in. You can't hide. Hallelujah. See, it starts when I go outside these four walls. Church is out there, y'all. When I got to deal with folks. When I got to love the unlovable. When I got to love somebody who don't like me. <laughs> That's where I get the muscles built up at. That's where I get the right stuff flowing through them roots. And, you know, as, as, as uh, uh, Pastor Wanda ministered to me a few Sundays ago, everything ain't the devil. <laughs> so, well, thank God. God getting you right, man. <laughs> he getting you right. He's he teaching how to endure hardness as a good soldier. Paul told Timothy, you're going to have to endure some stuff. Timothy, you're going to have to take some stuff. Folk going to act up. See, some of us got church hurt. God told me that. Got church hurt. But the Holy Ghost also said, he come to do a welfare check. You know, when people are missing in action, <laughs> you know, when you don't show up a while, you get a call from the apostle. That's a welfare check. Or if you hadn't seen your family members for a while, they send the sheriff out or something. That's a welfare check. You're missing in action. So the Holy Ghost want to do a welfare check. I want to make sure you're all right. Isn't that loving? Hallelujah. Isn't that loving? Because if it was up to us, we ain't doing no welfare check. Well, I guess this, this, and that, and all that, that, that. Uh -uh. Make every excuse in the world. But the Holy Ghost is doing a welfare check. He want to make sure. He want to make sure that you're walking the streets that's paved with gold. He wants to make sure that you're with the Lamb of God, that there is no need of the sun. Hallelujah, because he's so beautiful and radiant. Hallelujah. He just bright up everything. Bright up everything. That's why the Holy Ghost is doing a welfare check on you today. Are you all right? Hallelujah. Are you all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Mario. <laughs> he said, yes, he's the one say yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. They will have the audacity to try and stand in the judgment. But God said it won't happen. Nor the sinners in the congregation or the assembly of the righteous. It won't happen. It's going to be a separation. Separating the sheep from the goat. See the goat, they're like the butt heads, right? <laughs> the sheep are vulnerable. They know they need a shepherd. I need a shepherd, man. I need somebody. You need a shepherd if you're a sheep. It won't happen. It won't happen. Let me see something here. Okay, I'll leave that alone. All right, so verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That personal relationship with God. Does he know you? Tasha Cobb got a song say he knows my name, right? Does he know you? Or does he know of you? That's the difference, right? Do you have a personal relationship with God? Do 
it's important, y'all. Yahweh knows the righteous. He knows the righteous. He knows of them. Hallelujah. I'm just looking at my notes here. Let's see if I Yahweh is in deep relationship with the righteous. The kind of relationship that a father and a son might experience. In that kind of relationship, the father might not approve of everything the son does, but he would do whatever possible to bring an errant son back in relationship. That's God. The verse is saying that Yahweh knows and cares about the righteous to the point that he can be expected to keep that relationship intact. But the wicked shall perish. Yahweh doesn't know the wicked in the same relational way. Given that the wicked are not in relationship with Yahweh, they have no eternal support and can expect to perish. God knows our name. Those of us that are born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. For the things that are seen are temporal. They're not made of things which do appear. Amen. See, we are eternal people. The wicked is being satisfied here and now. See, we know that there's something beyond this. The believer. And that's what we should be striving for. Hallelujah. Focusing on the eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask, where's uh, Reverend Jordan? Oh, give me. Thank you, Red. Hallelujah. Thank you for lending me your ear. Glory to God. I love you. Because I don't have a choice, and I love God. God loves people, so I got to love what he loves. Hallelujah. Glory. Like I said earlier um, about the welfare check with the Holy Ghost, and if you've experienced any church hurt, You know, sometimes, and I'm not excusing if you were hurt by the church, I'm not excusing that, but sometimes we put a lot of expectation on people. And we don't give them room to have flaws, only to be disappointed. That's why Jesus said, um, Peter, you need to keep your eyes on me. We live in a fallen world, y'all. None of us are perfect. Even on our best day, it's our worst day. And sometimes people hurt people and don't even know they hurt them with, with not bad intentions. And you may have experienced that. Hallelujah. You may have been going through so much that you've decided that, hallelujah, the kind I'm going to take a break from the Holy Ghost. And he hadn't heard from me in a while, so he wants to do a welfare check on me. 